know, you don't believe it, but you have a huge following in the U.S., more than you ever believe. So this is for them. So I want to ask you a couple questions now. This is your last night. You just rung the last bell. How many pubs have you either ran or worked in in your entire career? Uh, for a long time, we've run four. And for short times or helping people out, we've probably done about another 40. 40? 40. Really? Off the top of my head. Four zero. Four zero. Wow. And you've been here since 2000? We came here in January the 12th, 2004. Really? So here's the Do question. Do you remember it used to be quiet oh, yeah. then? Yes. Oh, yeah. We it used was... to sit over there. Exactly. Good. Yeah, this was kind of pre-Scotty and post-Scotty. Yeah. So here's the question. There's no place like a pub to understand human behavior. So what do you know now about human behavior that you didn't know 40 pubs ago? What have you What have you observed about human behavior? The, you've nice, seen the it all. nicest person in the world can come into your bar, 12 pints of Guinness later, <laughs> he's turned into a raving lunatic. Really? Okay. <laughs> or, People come into your pub to uh, enjoy the cell. If they're down, then they can come up with it. If they're happy, they can get sad. If they drink gin, you know you're going to have a problem. <laughs> so, so gin is a problem. Gin's a big problem. All right, all right. Gin doesn't make you thin. Gin just makes you go morose. Well, Whiskey makes you lose patience. Really? Yeah. People who have drink whiskey. Their tolerance level gets a bit shaky. So all these spirits have personalities. Yeah, people who, are, people who drink rum. People who drink rum only drink rum. People who drink whiskey, they'll drink beer. People who drink Bacardi, they'll drink dark rum. Uh, people who drink lager tend to stay on lager all the time. The people who you have to watch is the ones who are already drunk when they come into your pub. <laughs> Because people who come in drunk and you're in a pub and it's crowded, if you get drunk with somebody or somebody gets drunk in a crowd, the, the people who's around them, they can see the aura, they give them space and they give them a bit of tolerance. Somebody who piles into a party and they're already drunk there, that's like they're in their face. And people just don't like that. So now let, I want to ask you a question because you said, why do you think people come to pubs? Of course, you know, to have a, have a pint and all that, but beyond you know, the liquor. Why do people come to pubs? Why do you think? Um, years ago, and I'm talking about 30, 40 years ago, working class people would stop at a pub on the way home, mm -hmm. to have a drink and unwind after a hard day's work, whether you worked in a coal mine or if you worked in a steelworks, you need to re uh, reboot your body by filling it up with water, alcohol, beer, whatever you wanted. People now go to your pub now, they're looking for social contact, mm. somewhere they can bring the wife to relax, uh, somewhere nice to eat, food's a very big thing now. And, you know, if want to go somewhere they can join us so they can try and meet people they might be single and they want to meet somebody where they're going to meet their future partner yeah it's getting harder and harder to find the right person so where did you meet your wife <laughs> not in a pub okay there was beer but there. did you but go there was beer involved but there was yeah, beer, there involved. beer involved and years and and ever after you go to your pub and enjoy a night out now people it's got very expensive to drink a lot of people preload before they come to the pub or they come out early and then go back and drink at home, or they drink at home and then they come out now because pubs are open later. It's got to be a very... A lot of people can't afford to drink anymore. Mm. So you've got to have a nice pub, a nice environment, whether it's the ladies' toilet, whether it's the best beer, whether it's the right lighting, whether it's Sky Sports, mm. it's all part of a jigsaw. So, two more questions. I've been with you. You only said two. I know. Yeah. But I like to. Number I six. Like to. <laughs> so I've been here many nights and you know, I've been talking and all of a sudden you'll say, stop, I've got to go. And you'll, you're you scanning the crowd and you see somebody that for some reason gets your attention and you need to. Go on then. How do you, how do you read that? How do you read these people and how do you know that somebody could be a problem? How do you read that? Um, 
different. Every, everybody's different. Yeah. Somebody who's on the wrong, somebody who, somebody will come in your pub and is the wrong fit. Mm. You know, is the wrong fit. Or the way he talks to your staff, or, you know, his, his body language. It's like having a little red light on the top of their head that's going bing, 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 bing. <laughs> so you're already watching them. And then either they're going to get better or you're going to have to go up and say, it's time you had to go. And then that's depending on how you say, it's time to go, it's the way that they're going to respond to what your request is. And do they usually go? It depends who you are. Okay. That's what we're talking about, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Depends who you are. There's so different ways of talking, there's different ways of talking to people. Yeah. Well, it depends on how tall you are. Yeah, if you're a great big guy, they might go, no. And you go, aye, okay. Do you want to be the same size as me? And when you get to the same size, you can stand up on a stool and you can be as tall as a big six foot guy and say, I want you to go now. Mm. You can take all the drinks off the table and you can put the money down on the table. You can knock the table over and say, hey, I'm sorry, and put 20 pound on the table. Oh, we'll get another drink. Nah, you're all right, you can leave now. Just depends how you want to do it. That's happy face. Try to keep the happy face. Mm -hmm. That's the hard task. See, they know. <clears throat> We've got two other licensees behind the camera here, and they're nodding like this as we speak. Learning from the school of Scott. <laughs> no, this is the, the school, school of Scott. This is right? a school. <laughs> this I, is a school I, I, of licenses. I know everything from this man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> how to deal with people. And how not to deal with people. <laughs> Yeah, how not to deal with well everybody's but, got to resolve the situation. Everybody is different. So yeah, everybody's it's, different. It's, it's tough. It really is tough. Uh, having a pub is like having a vegetable stall or a fruit stall or whatever you want. Okay. When you come in, everybody's looking at your stall and it's a show. So every day it's a different show and it depends on the people that come in your pub. Mm. You know. You can have good days and bad days, but the next day you've still got to open your fruit stall. You've still got to open your flower shop, you've still got to open your grocery, your grocery stall. No. So final question, I promise. Oh, dearie me. Okay, Scotty. <laughs> promise. Go on then. Do you want to phone a friend? So, this has become a very kind of famous pub in London, obviously, since you've been here. What's the most memorable night you've ever had since you've been here? Memorable could be good, could be bad, but just the most memorable night ever the at the at the at the mitre. We have a guy who comes in here. His name's Bill. His job really is Santa Claus. That's his full-time profession is Santa Claus. So we always have. Um, he always comes here the first Tuesday in December. You'd be amazed at the amount of boys who want to sit in Santa's lap. You'd be amazed at the amount of people who want to get a kiss by Santa. And we always start our Christmas, our Christmas season starts with this guy called Bill, who's just an ordinary chubby guy. But when he comes up the stairs dressed as Santa, you go, wow, he really looks like Santa. Wow. Right? He really looks like Santa. He goes around and he gives people free mince pies. We turn on the Christmas lights, we turn on the tree, you know. The pub becomes, hey, this is like Christmas, you know, like the big Crosby film, you know, where you go, it's Christmas. That is when you're running a good pub. Yeah. That's when you've got to feel good. You know, right. people go, it's going to be a great night. Yeah. Okay, one more question. Oh. Bonus, bonus, bonus. <laughs> so, you work hard. This, it, it, it takes a lot of work to run a pub, but what are you going to miss the most, Scotty? What are you going to miss the most? Because you just rang the closing bell, you get to sleep in tomorrow. And, uh, I don't get to sleep in tomorrow. I've got to get... Monday, Monday. You, Monday. You, know, you know George the dog. George the dog will be there on Monday as well. So George. George the dog. George the dog. So we'll still have to get up at eight o'clock on Monday, the same same as me. Uh, what I won't miss. What I won't miss is getting up at half past five in the morning to bring the beer in off the beer lorry. Really. What I won't miss is. The gents' toilets. Yeah, I'm so wonderful. What I won't miss is probably. Um... Jim. Well, I miss Jim. You can't see Jim, but Jim's in the background nodding at the moment. What we will miss is the social interaction that we have because everybody's pub, or the people who run pubs, this is their front room. Mm. This is their living room. 
So this is where they live for 12 hours a day, and then they go upstairs to the other part of their house. Ah, that's probably quite what I'll miss. Running in pubs is good and bad. It's like any job. But you've still got to go up every day, put the show on, serve people that you don't like, serve people that you do like, treat them all the same, and it's getting harder and harder. Mm. Yeah, it's why, getting harder and harder. Why, why is it getting harder and harder? Uh, people can go on TripAdvisor and tell lies. People can go on beer in the evening, they can say what beer you've got on, and they can moan and they can complain. And even if it's lies, it's still lies, you've got no comeback. Mm. The web, I can be the best pub since sliced bread. You, you understand are. what sliced bread is? So you can have been the best pub since sliced bread. Somebody can come in here and Straight. we've run out of toilet paper in the ladies for whatever reason. And they can go in and go, this pub is this, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And automatically your rating goes from there to that. You know, you let women in here. I'll let you in. <laughs> but as I mean, today now, it's all about TripAdvisor, IT, what's what's on, uh, beer in the evening, uh, where to go for a drink, uh, Zoopla, all these websites who mark you, and some of them haven't even been in your pub, and they put nonsense on it. And it and and it's no check. It's never checked to see if it's true. You just put it on it, and then when you try to get it off, that's a hard bit. Well, let me say this, guy. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. go on, here, bring I'm him just, up. Bring I'm just going to bring one of our best friends here. Yeah. Our yeah. most, hey, our most yeah. regular yeah. customer. George Foreman. Hey, George Foreman. George Foreman. George Foreman. <laughs> Age nine and a half. Oh, George. Oh. Desperate to go for a wee. <laughs> so we're going to close the interview now. Oh. And when you and when you uh, when you edit the film, you'll edit that George didn't want it. You edit that George wanted to go. Well, let me close with this, Scotty and Kathy. I'm doing this for all of our friends because I've told you before, you have a following back in the States that's larger than you can ever imagine. And that's why we're doing this. And so we just want to thank you for being part of the history and the beauty of London is you too. So congratulations on your Thank you. Well done. What's the name of the, uh, the, name of the baseball player that's there? Joe what? Oh, Joe Maurer. Yeah, we're yeah, taking Joe, take, Maurer's we're up taking the... Joe Maurer home with us. <laughs> there you go. All right. All right. So All right. he's getting keys coming with us. Perfect. And uh, hopefully the people who Joe enjoyed Maurer's seeing this will still come in the minor when we go. Well, enjoy the next chapter because you've earned it. So, thank you. We're all done, Scotty. No worries. Close. There's all the gang. <laughs> yes. so, it'll be on YouTube in an hour. We'll do some editing. I'll believe you, but without these people either, we wouldn't be where we are today. George wouldn't sit. He had to get a shot of it. He does lie down. Lie down. George. Good boy. George. Well done. Does George know he's moving yet? Does he know he's moving? Yeah, he knows he's moving. He's been... George. He's been hyper for a week because he saw suit, oh, suit, oh, suit boxes, suitcases, yeah, stuff going on. Yeah, he's, he knows there's something going on. George. I'm going to have to go because he 